Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. And today we are tackling part three, tier three of the do not research iceberg. As with the last part, please watch part one if you haven't already, or at least watch the beginning of part one so that you can see all the disclaimers and everything to see how these videos work and how and why the censoring happens. With all that being said, let's just get right into it. The first one on tier three is aeromorphs. To understand what an aeromorph is, we first need to understand what an anthromorph is. An anthromorph is essentially an anthropomorphized animal. It's a furry creature with a lot of the same characteristics as an animal, except they walk upright, they can talk, and they have very human-like bone structure. We very often see them in artwork as in the form of human foxes or human wolves. It can be a sexualized thing, however, it, that's not always the case. So that's an anthromorph. So an aeromorph, if you haven't been able to deduce yet, an aeromorph is the same concept except with airplanes and other uh, mobile machines. I'll see if I can find some safer work photos to post here so you can kind of understand what I mean, except even that's kind of hard because a lot of them are pretty hyper -sexualized. They are planes with human features, However, to me, they look way more like humans with plain features. It really does go with the common theme here that we've been seeing in this iceberg though, and that is, if you can imagine it, if someone anywhere in the world can imagine it, it's probably already on the internet somewhere. And of course, another running theme is no shame if you're into this, it's not hurting anybody. It's just that for most of us, this is very confusing. Anal prolapse is next. And just wanna give a big shout out, thank you to this wonderful iceberg for making me Google this. And warning, unless you work in a hospital or are used to these kind of gross things as part of your everyday life, this will probably gross you out. This is another medical condition where part of your rectum comes out of where it's supposed to be. Part of your colon essentially ends up on the outside of your body. And the photos of this are upsetting. I mean, it's just mostly because it could happen to anyone, but it's mostly just because it's really cringy to think about it happening to you. Your intestines are literally partially hanging out of your butt. And it sounds silly almost, but I have to say if anybody has ever experienced this, I am so sorry. It sounds like something I would not wish on my worst enemy. By the way, I read that this can occur due to chronic constipation. So friendly reminder to everybody to drink enough water and get your daily fiber in your food. Black Dahlia. Most of us, especially people in my audience, have probably heard of her. She is called the Black Dahlia. That's how most people are aware of this case and what it's referred to. But I would like to just say it was a real victim, a real woman, a real person that went through this and lost their life because of it, and her name was Elizabeth Short. She was brutally, brutally murdered in 1947, and while there were some suspects over the years, and some people believe that this case, at least we pretty much have it solved in terms of knowing who might have done it, it is technically still unsolved. We don't know 100%. Which is why this case is so infamous that such a brutal thing could be carried out and the person never be brought to justice. The reason it's on this list is because Photos of her crime scene are way too easy to find on the internet. I mean, they're everywhere if you look this up, so I don't recommend it. The basic gist of how her body was found is that she was completely severed in half. Her body was placed in a very objectifying position, probably specifically to humiliate her, and her mouth was cut from ear to ear, like to mimic a smile. So nobody deserves that kind of thing happening to them. And I definitely don't recommend looking up the pictures. It's pretty horrific. Bot fly larva. I hate my life. This one legitimately made me slightly nauseous. And the one after this one made me almost throw up. So this is a bot fly. And yes, the adults kind of look like bumblebees, but they're like bumblebees' evil twins. The larvae of these flies often grow in mammals, either in their intestines or right up in their skin. But then it gets worse. There is a specific species of this fly called the human bot fly, which means they infect humans. 
exactly the way they infect other mammals. One of the most common ways this happens is, is that a female botfly will capture a mosquito, attach her eggs to the mosquito, and then when a mosquito bites a human, the eggs larvae attached to the mosquito hatch and then they use the bite site as an entry point which segues very well into our next one which is bot fly removal so if you thought that last one was bad this one is way worse look i watched one guy one jar in its entirety i could not finish this video i found on youtube of bot fly larvae removal you will cry you'll almost vomit and for me i was just saying what the f over and over again. They burrow into your skin and then you can like actually see it moving underneath the skin surface in the hole where the wound is. And don't worry, I won't show you video of this. I might show you my reaction to it. But then you have to use tweezers. Somebody else has to like pick into your wound and remove it. And sometimes they're like this big. It's not like tiny little worm bugs that you imagine bunches of larvae being they're like huge and they're being pulled out of people's arms. Oh my, just bleh, bleh. Oh, Thank God, let's move on to a funny one. Cakefarts.com. This one is very weirdly exactly what it sounds like. It started of course, as most viral videos like this do as a shock site to kind of trick people into watching it. And it is literally just a shock site with this one page of a woman literally farting on a cake. The site doesn't exist anymore, but of course you can easily find the video somewhere. So if you ever see a meme or a t-shirt with a picture of a cake on it and underneath it, it says, you know what I like the most? It's because the woman says that in this video right before she farts on the cake. Of course, there's tons of reaction videos about this, just like there are for any other shock value videos. It's a very weird one. I wouldn't say like, do not research. The one that I found, it at least the main one, I believe, like is not very explicit. It's just extremely weird. <laughs> Behold, another medical one, carbuncle. This one is bad, but not as bad as bot fly larvae removal. This refers to a cluster of boils that were caused by a bacterial infection. I'm not gonna show you a picture of this one, of course, as the point is I'm Googling these things for you so you don't have to, but I will say if you choose to look it up in your own time, it's very, very upsetting. Chris Benoit is next. He was a pro wrestler and he was said to be one of the best. Forgive me, I'll probably have to censor a lot of this one out. This one's on the list because Chris ended up dying from after his wife and seven-year-old son. He killed both of them to death, very likely drugging Daniel, the seven-year-old boy with Xanax before he took his life. It was really weird because he did it to his wife and then like waited a whole day or two before proceeding with his son. And then he waited until even the next day to die from himself. And he's really disturbing how he did this because he used a weight machine that he had in order to uh, leverage himself up, I guess I should say. I don't know how else to say that without getting demonetized. However, that's probably not even the most disturbing part about all this. It's highly likely that Chris would not have done these crimes if he wasn't a pro wrestler. The reason being in his autopsy, after they examined his brain, they found very, very traumatic brain head injuries. He suffered many, many impacts to his head throughout his pro wrestling career. It was determined that his brain looked more like an 85 year old Alzheimer's patient rather than the 40 year old male brain that he had. As we are starting to learn more and more, traumatic head injuries, especially those in people that play sports over and over, contact sports like football, and they have lots of head injuries and lots of head banging over the years, they they are more likely to develop injuries that will cause Alzheimer's, but they can also cause severe depression, which Chris had, and severe mental illness, which Chris obviously also ended up having. While that doesn't excuse his actions, it still makes it extremely horrifying to think about the fact that he might not have done this if he hadn't suffered all those injuries. Another reason that the NFL is problematic. David Kalik of 4chan. David Kalik, his girlfriend, and then he posted 
naked photos of her body on 4chan right afterwards. However, he posted it as an anonymous user. The post that he did on 4chan was extremely disturbing in nature because not only did it have the photos of her up, but he also talked about how it's way harder to somebody than it looks like in the movies and how she quote unquote so damn hard. He posted it confessing to his crimes and then he confided in 4chan that he was planning to die by cop once they arrived to arrest him. He didn't go through with that. He managed to get arrested and he's now serving an over 80 year sentence. I also hope that he got like extra years for posting this online. I feel like you should get extra years for that, for like bragging about it, for glorifying it, for humiliating somebody, for like, doesn't that count as like messing with a corpse? Okay, we're not done with the brutality yet. Next is the death of Tim McLean. I'm considering making a full length video about his story for my patrons because it's too graphic and horrible, the details of it for YouTube without getting in trouble with YouTube, but I might post it for my patron someday because this story is just so bizarre. Tim was a 22 year old Canadian man who was just minding his own business one day when on July 29th, 2008, he was taking a Greyhound bus home from work when 40 year old Vincent Lee sat down next to him. Tim had fallen asleep on the bus. And again, like I said, was minding his own damn business when Vincent pulled out a giant knife. He used this knife to stab Tim to death as everybody on the bus watched in horror. Several passengers did try to intervene and save Tim's life, but they couldn't because every time they approached, Vincent would chase them away with a knife and threaten them. This is the worst part though. Uh, Vincent then proceeded to take Tim, start doing other, you know, stuff with the knife and his body in front of everybody. There was a day long standoff with police before Vincent finally tried to jump out the window and then the police were able to arrest him. Vincent was found completely not guilty for reason of insanity. Of course, instead he was locked up in a mental health facility, but he was released in 2015 after six years. He changed his name, but everybody knows what he changed his name to and he is a free man. I have no doubt in my mind that this was a legitimate case of insanity and that Vincent honestly did not know what he was doing. And as far as I know, his condition is now being uh, managed through medication, which is great. However, I just, my personal opinion on this is maybe somebody that did something like that, even with medication should maybe stay in a mental health facility or if not be strongly supervised for the rest of their life. I'm just, I, who's watching to make sure that he's taking his medication? Who's watching to make sure this doesn't happen again? I don't know. The fact that he got six years in just a mental health facility is, I mean, I think that's good. I don't think he should have gone to jail if he really was that mentally ill, but it's just bananas to me that he got out so quickly. Okay, let's talk about Dipper Goes to Taco Bell. Why am I doing this? Why? Why am I making this video? Why? This one, on the other hand, is nothing like it sounds like. This was a fan fiction written by someone based on the Disney cartoon called Gravity Falls. Most of you have probably heard of it. The show is about Dipper and his sister Mabel. Now, I'm about to tell you what this is about. It's disturbing. I know you know that since you're here, but just prepare yourself. And I, this is not even close to the full details because again, YouTube. So Dipper goes to Taco Bell. He gets diarrhea. So he goes to the bathroom. He gets to buy his own diarrhea. And then the story goes into very graphic, long detail about what he does after that. He accidentally cuts his own off in the bathroom and bleeds to death. Mabel comes in. She his body. Another man who works at Taco Bell then comes in and Mabel. He then uses both of their bodies in the tacos at Taco Bell. I don't know who wrote this. I, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Just a warning. If you choose to go read the full story, which I read 90% of it, it is 10 times worse than what I just described to you. I couldn't, couldn't tell yet. Don't know. Moving on. The next one is called electric R word and not the S-A-R word, the derogatory term for a group 
of some people with certain conditions R word. And as you can tell by the name, it is an extremely over the top offensive comic, all made in Microsoft Paint. I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or ironic or what. I have no clue, but it is so over the top offensive that it's like literally absurd. Just think of every possible trigger warning that you could imagine. And there's probably a really dumb comic version of it in this series. Lots of jokes about school sh Lots of jokes about violent SA. Lots of jokes about uh, Hitler is involved in some of these. You get the idea. Oh god, do I have to explain this one? Doesn't most people know what this is without having to look it up? Again, I don't know why I felt the need to Google this one still. I felt like just in honor of committing to this video, I have to Google and actually commit to seeing everyone. I mean, but most of us know what this is. It's a thing. It's when you put your entire hand or most of a hand into somebody's or and this one's, I had no idea that Wiki could get so explicit, but if you go to the Wiki page on this, if you do have a desire to see it, there are very graphic examples, like photos on the Wiki page about it. It's very odd. Okay, moving right along to Fistula. Now, this one is gonna get a little TMI because I have experienced fistulas firsthand, so I can tell you exactly what it's like and exactly why you don't want one and exactly why it's on this list. And don't mind me as this one might give me a little bit of PTSD. Now, many of you, many of you the OG subscribers out there know that I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease a little over a year ago. I ended up in the hospital for over two weeks after my Crohn's caused a fistula, and then the subsequent abscess from the fistula almost put me into septic shock. So if you're curious, and this will make sense as to what this has to do with fistulas, but if you're curious, basically Crohn's disease causes ulcers. Think like the little canker sores you get on the inside of your mouth sometimes. That's an ulcer, except you get those pretty much from the from your mouth to your anus. And in my case, my Crohn's, I was diagnosed with severe Crohn's at age 29, and mine was so bad that yes, I had my mouth covered in them and they went all the way through my colon. I could not eat, I could barely speak or do anything. And that was just the top. I also could not eat or do anything, lost a bunch of weight, yada yada. So these ulcers can form fistulas. Fistulas, so the ulcer like digs away at your, in your insides and it creates a hole. And a hole in very, very simplistic terms is a fistula. And they're basically holes in your organs and places on your body where holes are not supposed to exist. So my Crohn's disease caused ulcers. These ulcer sores caused the fistula, the hole, and this fistula then subsequently caused an infection, which causes an abscess, which an abscess is, you know, where the infection builds up in this giant pocket inside of your body of disgusting shit. So I was sick for months. I completely lost the ability to walk without help. I could not eat. They put me on nutrition IV in the hospital and I was in the hospital for 16 straight days. That is all because, it was because of Crohn's disease, but that was technically all because of the fistula. By the way, if you're curious, several surgeries later and due to the magic of biological medicine, I am in full remission. I have no symptoms of Crohn's. It will come back sometime in my life, but I currently am in remission because of my medication. And then the other awful part about fistulas is that usually to treat them, they have to insert something called a seton, which is essentially a tiny surgical tube into the hole in order to keep the abscess from forming again so it drains fluid out of it. I had cetons in my ass for six full months. So that's a fistula. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend looking up photos of it and I also hope to God that none of you ever have to experience it in your life because again it's one of those things I wouldn't wish on anyone. Okay, hope you loved that trip down memory lane and way too many details about my medical history, and let's move on to the next one. The next one is Fred Durst's sex tape. So if you don't know, Fred Durst is an actor, he's a singer, he's a rapper, and he has even directed some stuff. He is most known for being the frontman of the band Limp Biscuit. In February 2005, a private 
mixtape of his with a former girlfriend got leaked on the internet, I believe by hackers. However, the stories of how it happened vary. He ended up suing 10 websites for posting it, which honestly can't blame the guy. Of course, unfortunately, the video is still out there and very easy to find. I don't think this one is particularly disturbing. I just think you shouldn't research it for the sake of respecting people's privacy because there's plenty of people that willingly put that kind of stuff on the internet and they're consenting to it. And then why watch the ones that did not consent to it? However, I'm usually on the side of, yeah, celebrities deserve to have personal privacy, especially over those things. Uh, they just, I think they have the right to that, whether they're in the public eye, they're in the public eye about everything else. So why can't they just have one thing to themselves? Anyway, okay, gallstones, more gross medical stuff. Gallstones are hardened deposits of bile that form in the gallbladder. Often, if you are having a bunch of pain with them, then you can get your gallbladder removed. It's one of those organs that we don't actually need. However, some people get them and they never have symptoms, so they actually don't have to get surgery. It's just fine. It's on this list though, because the photos of them are very gross. Gangrene, another medical one, yet this one is very, very serious. It's when blood flow is cut off to certain parts of the body and the tissue of that part of the body then begins to break down and die. This makes that part of the body become very green, bluish in color. It's something that you're at much higher risk for if you have certain chronic diseases, among them being diabetes. Severe cases of this can end up in death or amputation of said limbs. Another fun fact though, is that there's a lot of ways to treat gangrene in less severe cases, including something called maggot debridement. But we'll get to that one later in this video because it's also on this tier. How? Maui died. This one reminds me of Rocco's Basilisk a little bit, though they're not related at all. Maui was the demigod of Polynesia. He was known for having a very mischievous nature. In the mythos, Maui believed that he could defeat death and give the gift of immortality to all of mankind. In the story, Maui's father admitted to Maui that he made a mistake when casting the spell over him as a baby. He was casting a spell that would make Maui sacred and give him protection for life. But his father forgot part of the ceremony and because of this, Maui became mortal. His father told Maui about a goddess, the guardian of life. She was the one that would ensure that Maui would indeed die someday. So Maui therefore came up with a plan Plan. He believed that if he found this goddess, the guardian of life, and if he went inside of her vagina, like her, his entire body, and traveled through her body and came out her mouth, this would essentially be a reverse birth situation, and he would be able to become immortal that way and give the gift of immortality not only to him, but to all of mankind. He did find the goddess and she was sleeping, so he did succeed in part of his plan. But once he got to her mouth, she was awoken by one of Maui's brother and snapped her mouth closed. Her teeth, unfortunately for Maui, were made of the rock obsidian, which cut Maui in half and he died right then. While the tale itself is sort of creepy, it's even creepier to think about the fact that according to legend, this is the reason that we are all mortal. And if Maui had succeeded, all humans would be immortal. Let's move on from the very serious mythos to the next one, which is how to seduce a turkey. This one is likely referring to a very odd experiment that was done in the 1960s. Two doctors, Dr. Martin Sheen and Dr. Edward Hale, wanted to know what specific body part of the female turkeys made the male turkeys uh, excited, ready to go, wanting to mate. So in order to test this, they made a full taxidermied female turkey. And then they put this taxidermied female turkey into a pen with a group of male alive turkeys that were uh, ready to go. They then removed parts of the taxidermied turkey one at a time, such as her wings, her legs, and eventually her entire body, leaving only her head on a stick. The results of this experiment are weirder than the experiment itself. They found that if the male turkeys were given a female turkey without her head, so her whole body without her head, they would do their little mating dance, their little mating display for her, but they would never mount her body. However, if they did the opposite, if they gave the male turkeys the female head, 
mounted on a stick without any part of her body, the males would not only do their little mating ritual, their dance, their display for her, but they would also try to mount the head on a stick and simulate copulation, which just, okay, the findings themselves, great. Now we know that it's the female head that really gets the male turkey going. But why did they do this experiment? Why was, they were just sitting there one day and thinking, gee, I wonder what turkeys are into. It, very, I, what the fuck? I, don't, I couldn't, I don't know. Hyperdontia, another one that warning can trigger tripophobia. Hyper meaning high. Hyper meaning high. Doncha meaning teeth. So when you have an excessive number of teeth, more than the normal adult has. Too many of them grow in your mouth. And some of the photos of them, whether they are Photoshopped or not, are very disturbing, very triggering for tripophobia. Judas chair, or often referred to as the Judas cradle. This one you don't wanna hear, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. This is a torture device. It's a chair. And I can show you what it looks like because without any other pictures of people with it, it's not, it's not that graphic. So here's a picture of it. And what happens is in the medieval times when they used these, they suspended a person over the top of the chair and then usually for just general torturing as punishment or when they were being questioned, they would lower the person onto the chair, bottom down. It was likely invented by the Spanish in the 16th century. And if you were to survive this chair, most people that went through it and survived still died shortly afterwards. Anyway, due to complications, or I would imagine infection because they didn't clean these things. Okay, Judith Barcy is next. This one, warning, very depressing, warning, another child victim. This sweet baby angel was a child actress who died at the hands of her father at the very young age of age 10. She did a lot of commercials and guest stars, but most people know her as the voice of Ducky in the Land Before Time movie and the voice of Anne Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. Her dad, it was, her dad was just super, super to both her and her mother, both physically and emotionally, verbally. Mom had tried to report him to police in the past, but they didn't end up doing anything. And they were eventually being investigated by CPS uh, after a child psychiatrist working with Judith tipped them off. But tragically, the investigation was dropped after Judith's mom promised the psychiatrist that she was going to get Judith out of that situation and that they had a plan. So I'm guessing dad caught wind of this plan and decided to take their lives before they were able to get away from him. He killed them both and then he burned their bodies. And then of course, afterwards. Okay, sorry in advance. This next one is also very depressing. This one is about the kawaii o'o. The o'o was a bird that was only exclusively found on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. The bird went extinct due to mosquito transmitting diseases, predators, and deforestation. The bird was last seen in 1985, and there was one last recording of the bird in 1987. So when the cameraman took this recording of the bird in 1987, so the cameraman turned on the recording after he took it because he wanted to hear his recording back. And this poor little male bird then came flying to him because he thought that he heard another one of his kind but he was calling to a female bird that would never come. And then he died too. And as far as we know, the entire species of bird is gone. Lotus feet. This is the very old custom from China of foot binding. Foot binding is when in some cultures, again, it originates from China and I'm pretty sure it's only been really a Chinese custom where they used to bind up women's feet at a very young age and bind them tiny and small so that they wouldn't grow out. 
and they would become really disfigured in order to keep their feet tiny, as tiny feet was a symbol of pure beauty back in the day, and it was also a status symbol. Thankfully, this is pretty much a non-existent practice now, as I think this would hopefully be seen as child abuse. But I will show you a photo here of a resulting lotus feet. If you're curious, you can of course skip to the next timestamp if you don't want to see it. The Luna Park Demon. This is another one that I could make a whole video about because it goes down such a rabbit hole, but obviously don't have time in this video. Luna Park was an amusement park with a ride in it called the Ghost Train. A fire broke out on this ride in June of 1979. Seven people lost their lives in this fire and the ride was completely destroyed. And an official cause of this fire was never actually found. Three of the victims included a dad named Named John Gotson and his sons, Damien and Craig. Their mother did not go with them on the ride, even though she was with them that day. And so she therefore survived, but lost her entire family in this tragedy. One day when she was ready, she decided to look through photos that were taken that day that her family passed away. And she found a photo of Damien that made her stop and caused complete shock. It was the last photo taken of Damien right before he passed away. And Damien is posed in the photo with a man dressed in a very demonic looking mask with horns. And to this day, the man in this photo has never been identified or located. Okay, so you may think maybe people were dressed up in costumes, but according to the story, they weren't. Nobody in that amusement park dressed up in costumes, and especially not this costume. Many believe that he was dressed up as the demon Moloch. And if this doesn't give you chills, I don't know what will, but Moloch's whole little shtick was sacrificing children specifically through burning them alive. Obviously this was a person in a costume and not an actual demon. However, it leads people to believe if this man was dressed up as this demon and was the person that started this fire and specifically did so in order to hopefully impress Moloch. I personally doubt that somebody would dress that elaborately before committing such a heinous crime because it would draw a lot of attention to themselves but you have to admit the coincidence is pretty creepy. And he did get away with it, so what if it was that person? Of course, that's all alleged. We have no idea what really happened that day. Good luck sleeping tonight. Maggot therapy. This is what I was referring to when we talked about gangrene earlier, and it's called maggot debridement is another name for it. Now get ready for this one. This is when in certain wounds and certain medical practices, they put maggot larvae on a wound in order to assist in eating away the dead skin and other dead tissue on the wound in order to help you heal. And yes, the FDA approved this type of therapy in 2004 in America, and I'm sure it's legal in many other places. Of course, under doctor supervision and stuff, they're not saying do it at home. And by the way, the larvae are disinfected before they're introduced to the wounds. This one blew my mind. I had no idea that maggots could do anything other than just infest your body and make you sick. And here they are healing people. But just trust me on this one. I am your friend. Trust me. Take my word for it. Do not Google this one. Pictures of it. Mallard. Let's go back to lighthearted. This one is actually kind of amazing and makes me really happy. And I'll tell you why. So mallards, male mallards, a type of duck have corkscrew penises. And I am not kidding. They literally look like corkscrews. I'll let you look it up if you want to see them. The reason this is amazing though is because female mallards have corkscrew vaginas, except they're going in the opposite direction. And this allows the female mallard to stay in control during mating. So the male ducks cannot, literally cannot force themselves on the females. If they do, if the male does force himself on the female, it 
ovulate almost never results in fertilization, so they are not motivated to do so. And this part of nature basically forces male mallards to be nice to their little female mallard wives. I thought that was strangely beautiful. Mara Persona. So this is a character from a role-playing video game called Persona 5. Mara is the character, and let me put it this way, I cannot show you this one on YouTube. But if you choose to Google it, you'll probably say, what the f out loud like I did. I will describe what it is. This character is a giant monster piece. It has a mouth, it's green, and it has lots of tentacles coming out of it. You have officially been warned. Meconium. Meconium refers to literally baby's first poop. The reason it's gross is because, fun fact, this baby's first poop is made up of things they acquired in the womb, as that would make sense. That means that this poop includes amniotic fluid, bile, mucus, amongst other things. If you are unfortunate enough to go to the wiki page for this word, their front and center is a picture of it. <laughs> Again, did not know wiki put such weird things on their pages. Thankfully, I used to work in an infant room at a daycare, and so I've seen way worse things come out of people, so this one really doesn't disturb me that much, but I do understand why it's a little bit upsetting to think about. Micah Stunts. So I am super mature. This one made me laugh. Micah Stunts is a person, male, with a 10-pound penis. So many things in this iceberg. You heard that right. His thing is the size of an average cat. And no, he was not born this way. He's had four different procedures over the years in order to attain this look. He says he has trouble finding pants, but he said that's about the only downside. For obvious reasons, I can't post a picture of this on YouTube. I'm not even gonna risk posting it. The only ones out there are ones with his clothes on, so I'm not, but I'm not even gonna risk that. Have at it if you want. It's out there, literally and figuratively. I cannot say this one. I'm gonna read right off my screen. Oculolinctus. Ugh. Regardless, this one is way worse than most things on the list for me. This one really gets me. Personal preference. But this one really grosses me out. It's another paraphilia. You've probably heard of it because it was a trend back in the day and it was causing lots of problems but it's when you lick another person's eyeball. And you guys know we don't like to kink shame on my channel. I've said that many times, but I really don't advise, even if you're into this, that anybody actually plays this one out because it is known for causing lots of eye infections. Uh, and I definitely don't recommend doing it as a trend because I think people doing this as a trend is what kind of caused the popularity of this to go up and it was causing a lot of conjunctivitis. The photos of this one make me squirm like crazy. I lasted approximately 0.5 of a millisecond on Google images before I had to close out of it. I'm going to finish up filming this video in a couple days. So, okay, we are back. It's a few days later. As you can tell, I probably look a little bit different. It's really hot in here. You can't see it, but I'm not wearing any pants. I mean, I'm wearing underwear. I'm not like totally Donald ducking it. It's just that I got so hot in here I could not comfortably film with pants on. Is this TMI? Probably. Okay, let's get back to our iceberg. The next one is origins of the jackalope myth. So a jackalope is a creature from North American folklore. And the name comes from a combination of both words antelope and jackrabbit. It's a myth. The animal itself doesn't exist outside of folklore, but a lot of people will make taxidermy versions of it in real life using a jackrabbit and deer antlers. However, that is not why it's on this list. The reason it's on this list is because researchers believe that the origin of the jackalope was perhaps inspired by rabbits in the real world that were infected with something called Shope papillonavirus. This virus would cause the rabbits to grow these horn-like large protuberances, for lack of a better word, out of different parts of their body. And it looks very strange. Patricia Piccinini. I'm sure I'm saying her name wrong though, so I'm very sorry to all of my Italian friends out there. Uh, Patricia is an artist. Another very strange artist where if you look up her work and just go into Google Images, it will be pretty off-putting for most people if they don't know what her work 
is. The focus of her work is usually on bioethics and future dystopias. She does these human animal hybrid sculptures, but usually they're like very grotesque looking and just awkward and just very unsettling. I am going to show a few examples of her work in this video, so if you don't want to see them, I would just skip to the next one altogether. The piece on the screen right now, for example, is a human-pig hybrid, and this is commentary about how the United States had developed the first human-pig real embryo in efforts to start research towards growing human organs in animals for human transplants. This particular piece is about how your body would need to be structured in order to survive a fatal car accident. So there's a lot more online if you want to look her up, but like I said, just a very odd way to spread her message. However, I do actually, I do actually really like her art. I think it's really cool, but I like things that make me feel disturbed like that, so. Quantum Xeno effect. Forgive me as this is another very sciencey one, and so I'm not great at explaining these types of topics since I'm not very science savvy and these types of concepts don't usually interest me that much. And this one in particular is very, very hard to explain. So of course I'm going to do a very watered down simplistic version for this video. I found one quote that said, quantum Zeno effect describes the situation that an unstable particle, if observed continuously, will never decay. And to a lot of you, this probably still doesn't make any sense. So after a lot of Googling, trying to understand this myself and failing Miserably, I finally found a few people on Reddit that were willing to explain it to people in layman's terms. Like I said, this is a very simplified version, so if you understand this concept well, please do not come at me, because this is just a way for the everyday person to sort of scratch the surface of what this is, even though I know it does not cover it. So from username pseudonym1066 on Reddit, the quantum Zeno effect is that researchers noticed if you keep observing something, it doesn't appear to change. It is in effect frozen in that state. So the best example I could think of, like in metaphor form, and I'm still not sure that this is perfectly right, but I think it's like you watching a tree grow. If you just sit there right in front of a tree and stare at it for hours, days, weeks, years, it's not gonna appear to ever grow. But if you take a photo of that tree, I guess in this case it would have to be like a baby tree. If you took a photo of that tree that had just been planted, you come back many years later and take another photo of that exact same tree, then it looks like it changed quite a bit. But you cannot observe these changes yourself by just staring at the tree for years. I think this one is on this list exactly because of this reason. It's paradoxical and it's confusing and it will make your head hurt if you think about it too long. Salted frog legs. This one is so creepy. So if you have frog legs, I believe they have to be raw and you shake a bunch of salt on them. The legs will start to shake and twitch and dance as if they're alive, even though they're not attached to a body. I will show a clip of somebody who posted this concept on YouTube. This evening, I'm gonna salt them up. That's awesome. You know, we can put this on YouTube and set it to some music. <laughs> Saturn Devouring His Sun. This is actually a painting by a Spanish artist named Francisco Goya. Many of you would probably actually recognize this if you saw it. I did. The painting is said to be a depiction of the Roman god Saturn. And in Greek mythology, Saturn was very concerned that one of his children would grow to overthrow him. And so therefore he would eat each one of them whole as they were born. There are other versions of this painting as well, all of them pretty equally unsettling. It's often regarded as one of the creepiest paintings ever to exist. However, according to several Redditors, we actually attached this Saturn mythos to this painting, not the other way around. Apparently, the artist Goya never explicitly named this painting the Saturn who ate his son or explained that it had anything to do with this. And if you notice, the mythos says that Saturn eats his son whole and he's clearly not doing that in this picture. In addition, it doesn't really look like a newborn baby in his painting. It looks like a grown man. So creepy, interesting, 
nonetheless. The next one is Seiya no Uta, and this one is a Japanese one, so please again forgive my Japanese pronunciation. Seiya no Uta is Japanese for the Song of Seiya. Song of Seiya is a visual novel. If you don't know what a visual novel is, you will need to to understand this one, but it's a video game genre that is interactive. But at the same time, it really has a pretty structured story that goes along with it. Doki Doki Literature Club is a great example of a visual novel that a lot of us that have been on the internet a long time are aware of. So this particular visual novel is, for lack of a better word, pretty messed up. It's classified by Wiki as a suspense, horror, lollicon, eroge, visual novel. Lollicon is something that shouldn't exist, as it is erotic fiction except the main object of desire typically is a very very young girl and then eroge just means that the story is erotic in nature so this visual novel is about a man named fuminori who survives a car accident with his parents except his parents both die in the car accident as a result of the accident his senses are now all completely messed up so now he perceives the world, every other human in the world look to him like these lumpy, fleshy, awful looking monsters. Food tastes bad now, and when people talk to him, it just sounds like screeching and screaming. In a very deep depression, he finally meets the girl named Seiya. And to him, Seiya looks like this beautiful, gorgeous young woman. However, to everybody else in the world, her real appearance is of a monster. Chaos ensues, very inappropriate things happen, so trigger warnings for that. I don't want to spoil the game unless anybody actually does want to look this up themselves or go play the game, but it's, yeah. Snail teeth. This is just another creepy biology fact. Snails have teeth. Snails have microscopic teeth, and some of the snails have up to 20,000 of these microscopic teeth, but most of them are usually between 2,000 and 12,000. I find this fact weirdly adorable, but I find snails weirdly adorable. Something about a little snail sitting there munching on something with its thousands of teeth makes me weirdly happy. I don't know. The next one is Sokushin Butsu. This is when Buddhist monks become mummified. In some cultures, their bodies are simply mummified after death. But especially in Japan, there used to be this practice when Buddhist monks would practice ascetism. Ascetism is basically abstaining from anything pleasurable in order to reach a spiritual enlightenment. However, there was a practice that exists where they would do this until they literally starved to death. And by doing it in a certain way, these monks would enter a mummified state before they died. For years before they died, they would eat only certain plants found in the mountains, making sure that all fat from their body came off. And then they would steadily and slowly reduce their food intake and then eventually their water intake. This process would cause their body to naturally mummify. If you succeeded, they would then die in this state and their body would stay mummified without any intervention. There have actually been bodies found in this state, though it's like less than 20 is most of the sources I found that they've actually found. There's probably more people that have succeeded in this that we don't know about, but it's pretty well known that this was a very difficult thing to accomplish and very few monks could actually do it. But if you could accomplish this, it is thought by these Buddhist monks that you would stay, instead of dying, you would stay in this eternal state of meditation. It was of course deemed illegal in the late 1800s. Sounding, this is another thing. This one will make you very uncomfortable and probably twitch and cringe a little bit if you happen to have a penis. Sounding is traditional a real medical procedure in which the urethra is basically dilated in order to remove an obstruction. Sounding refers to people who do this in their free time. They put these things called sounds, which are essentially metal rods, up their urethras for the purpose of, well, they like it. It does not sound fun to me, but you know, different strokes for different folks. However, by everything I've read on this topic, it can be like very, very dangerous. It could cause irreparable damage. And of course it is not recommended that anybody 
ever tries this at home. Subungual nodules. This is a nodule tumor thing that grows typically underneath a toenail. The photos of this are scary, not recommended. Moving on. Super volcano predictions. This is just another anxiety inducing one. There are these things called super volcanoes. A great example of this would be the volcano in Yellowstone National Park. Scientists believe that if this volcano or another super volcano were ever to have a super eruption, it would spread for like thousands of miles across the United States or wherever it happened to be and cause just devastating consequences at best at worst, apocalyptic ones. It's very frightening to think about. However, the odds of it actually happening are pretty low in the grand scheme of things, at least in the next couple thousand years, the odds of it happening are pretty low. And I just think right now we have bigger fish to fry, so let's move on. The ultimate so we're going back to OG Internet and the Newgrounds website again. This video is actually a parody. The original video that it is making fun of is The Ultimate Showdown. The Ultimate Showdown was a flash animation of famous characters from various movies and other, you know, media were put together. They got really angry with each other and it's an ultimate showdown. They start to kill each other and it's kind of violent, even though it's silly because it's just an animation. But then there was a parody made of this video called The Ultimate it's the same characters from the first video, except this one, they're, instead of hurting each other, they're doing exactly what the name implies to each other. Uh, the video is pretty graphic in terms of flash animation and just very, I would, the best word I can describe it is unapologetic. Tongue eating louse. This is a little sea parasite that infects fish through their gills. The female louse attaches itself to the tongue of the fish. The male attaches behind the female in the gill arches. These little critters then sever the blood vessels of the fish's tongue until it falls off and then they attach itself to what is left of the tongue, the little stub of the tongue left, and becomes the fish's new tongue. I would imagine in order to eat everything that the fish tries to consume. It's not only gross, but it's pretty rude. Toxoplasmosis. I honestly feel like this one is just on the list just because it's fun to say. But many of you have probably heard about this. This is why if you are pregnant, you should never clean out a cat's litter box. It's a parasite that can be commonly found in cat feces. You can also get it by eating undercooked meats if the meat's contaminated. In perfectly healthy people, if you're infected with toxoplasmosis, you may get flu-like symptoms, but by everything I read, most people show no symptoms at all. However, like I said before, if you're pregnant or if you have a pretty compromised immune system, then this can be very dangerous. If a fetus gets infected with toxoplasmosis early on in the pregnancy, then it is likely or it's more likely that the baby could be born either stillborn or not born at all. Like I said, I really don't get why this one one is on the list and why people, I don't think it's particularly scary. I mean, it would suck, but it's just so rare and there's nothing particularly horrifying about it. I mean, most people are going to want to avoid parasites and other stuff if they're pregnant. So I don't know. Unbirthing. This is literally exactly what it sounds like. It is similar to vor, which we talked about in a previous part of this video series in that it's often a second but it's not physically possible. And so people usually participate and fantasize about this particular one primarily through artwork and fan fiction. It's when somebody or something goes completely whole into a vagina and then cuddles up into the womb. Yeah, this is another one that like most of us are not going to get it. And sorry to people that like this stuff, but most of us are going to find this pretty unsettling because that concept just kind of makes us, it's weird, I guess, to us is for lack of a better word, atypical, I should say better than weird. But I have to say, I have no issues with this. Just like Vor, it doesn't hurt anybody. It actually doesn't involve any real people at all. And it's so it kind of has to be all consenting parties that are going to look for this online. So who cares? Whale So this is just something if you've never seen it, you will not be expecting it. And it's just something none of us think about on a regular basis. Most of us wouldn't even think to research this and be like, hmm, what does this look like? 
but a lot of whale penises are very, very large, as you would imagine. The blue whale, I think, is the largest, and the blue whale has one that is usually between eight feet and almost 10 feet. So yeah, I saw a headline that speculated whether when people took a picture of the Loch Ness Monster, was it maybe perhaps not the Loch Ness Monster, but a whale that was close to the surface of the water. All right, last on our tier three list for today is gonna be why the chainsaw was invented. So as you know, Man, do I question my life choices sometimes when I am making this series and if I really wanna be doing this and if I really want all these things in my search history. But then there's other times like this where there's just these random useless weird facts that I never would have known unless I was a YouTuber. So before C-sections were invented, literally the only possibility for getting a baby out was through the vaginal canal. If the baby couldn't get through, if there were complications or the baby was breached or something like that, they would have to cut away some of the pelvic bone with a knife. However, in 1780, the chainsaw was invented to make this particular procedure a little bit more efficient. Now, this was not a giant cranking electric chainsaw, obviously, like we see today or like the clowns in the mazes go after you with. This was a very, very small version of it and it had a hand crank that wound it up. However, I don't think the woman that was giving birth got anesthesia back then still. So even though it made the procedure a little quicker and maybe a little safer because it was more precise, they still had to get their pelvic bone cut. Hallelujah for modern medicine and medical drugs. Oh my goodness, so that was tier three. That seemed to be the longest one yet. I don't know why these videos keep getting longer. They shouldn't be. I guess there's just more topics in each tier as we go down. I think they get a little shorter as we get further down though. So we got that going for us. Okay guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Until the next part, if you're just following the series or until the next video, I will see you all later. Thank you so much to my patrons. Special shout out to top tiers, Colin Holmes, Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Dirty Kitty, Quasi Eli, Little Kittle Cat, Whimsicott Fan, Delta Wolf 776, Mitchell Meyer, Mike, and Alice Paul.